Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'll show you how to change a window screen and also how to print some new 3D corners for the frame. So there are a few window screens in our home that are a little worse for wear. In my daughter's room, she's been patching up a hole that's letting bugs in with some tape. And in the kitchen, we're not using one of the windows because the screen is torn and it again will let bugs in. Replacing the window screen is something that I've done before. It's really not that difficult and I'll show you how to do that. The sun can also do a number on the plastic corners that hold the frame of the screen together. So I'll show you how to model and 3D print some new corners as well so that you can get that screen back in place and doing its job in no time. So before the flies or mosquitoes start buzzing in, let's get started. Before starting with the screen removal, I went to my local Home Depot and found a screen repair kit. This particular one includes the screen, some spline, and the tool in order to insert the spline in the frame. I remove the screen by opening the window all the way, grabbing the two tabs and pulling directly opposite the tabs. As you can see here, it pulls free of the frame and then you stick it all the way through and bring it back in towards you. The corners on this one are broken, as you can see here, which is why it flops so much when I removed it. In order to remove the screen from the frame, we're going to remove the spline, which is sort of a rubbery or foam type cord. So here I'm using an awl just to pry it up. And as you can see, it's quite brittle. All that time spent in the sun, the temperature changes, causes it to lose a lot of its flexibility and become brittle. So it works a lot better if once you've got a little bit of screen exposed, you simply work around the edges by pulling underneath the screen. That'll pull the spline up and it'll also pull the screen free at the same time. Gonna work your way around the edge removing all of the screen from the frame and making sure that it, the track is nice and clean in order for you to eventually put in your new screen and spline if there's any sticking points use an awl or screwdriver to just pry up those points and strip it out this particular screen that i'm showing here was ripped along the bottom so I had to use the awl to pull it up because there wasn't any leverage with the existing screen already ripped. Starting that last pass just going to dig it up again with the awl and then use the screen as leverage underneath to pull up the spline. As you can see the screen that I removed from my daughter's bedroom is all broken. The corners that hold the frame together were cracked and broken and so I needed to model up some new ones that I could print on my 3D printer. Here I'm using SolidWorks to lay out the design. I measured the size of the corner and then also the tabs that fit inside the frame slots and here I'm just going to go through applying those measurements and creating the part that I need and then I'm going to extrude it to the height of the part that I need and then go ahead and remove some of the cutouts and also add some fillets and things to uh, make the whole thing a little bit smoother and rounded a little more finished. After I finished the part I exported it to Simplify 3D using 0.3 layer height and 20% infill and then I printed off one first to test, tweak the design a little bit and then printed four at once in order to do the assembly. With that done, I'm simply going to work my way around from corner to corner, inserting the pieces and completing the frame again. I did have one corner that didn't pull out very well, it ended up breaking off. So instead of trying to work it out, I instead just tapped it deeper into the channel to make room for the new corner that I was going to insert. When you are doing the side with the hinges, you need to insert the metal hinge first and then the corner on top to wedge it inside. Now I'm going to open up the kit here, you see that you get a bundle of spline, that's the rubber cord, and then you get the tool in order to push the spline into the groove. I'm going to free up the screen here. I'm going to lay it out here in a way that covers the full area of the frame, and then I'm just gently going to start pushing that spline into the groove and using the tool to work it into the groove as well. There's a concave and a convex end or wheel of the tool, but I really prefer using the concave tool, and it just works really well at, at both guiding the spline and giving you the support as you push through. As you work your way around the edges, the first two edges, it doesn't really matter if you have much tension because you're going to add the tension as you do the third and fourth side.
You can see here, I didn't quite get the tension right just doing it by myself. So it's easy enough just to lift up the spline again. And I'm gonna get my wife here instead to give me a little support, a couple extra hands that will create a little more tension on the screen as I go ahead and do it a second time. There is a balance between enough tension and not too much tension. Too much tension could actually cause the screen to tear, in which case you're creating a hole and you'd have to start over again. And not enough tension will give it a very rippled or wobbly look to it. It just wouldn't look as clean or as nice like you would expect to see a professionally made screen. Once you found the right balance, go back over it a couple times with the tool just to make sure that it's fully seated inside the groove. With that done, grab a craft knife or any kind of uh, sharp knife and just go around and trim the excess screen material from outside the groove. Once you've done it a few times, you get a technique. In this case, it was a little bit slow, but once you figure out how to run the knife underneath the edge properly, it does make it a lot quicker and a lot cleaner look overall. Using this spline method, creates a lot more surface area for the screen to be stretched instead of something like nails or screws that could be used for other types of materials. And now you see the finished screen, snug, but not too tight. And inserting it again, you push it through the hole, bring it back in, use the tabs to push against the springs, lock it in place, and it's all done. It's just that simple. So now you see how easy it is to put all the pieces back together and get that window screen ready to use again. If you don't have a 3D printer, you could always get corners at a hardware store, although be warned that they might not always be the same shape or size that you need, and so they might not fit perfectly. If you need 3D printed corners, you can model them yourself or use some of the designs that have already been created. Let me know by sending me an email if you'd like me to send you the files that I use. You could always have the files printed at a library or makerspace or by somebody else that you know that has a 3D printer. For the screen replacement, you don't necessarily have to get the all-in-one type package that I did, but for $15 to include the screen, the spline, and the tool, I think that's a pretty good trade-off. If you enjoy these kinds of projects, let me know by giving the video a like and subscribe to the channel to see new videos. I post a new one every Saturday morning. Comment below and let me know your own screen replacement stories. And let me know if you have suggestions for other types of home renovation or DIY projects you'd like to see down the road. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, especially those that keep you protected from the elements, don't be afraid to be balder.